He was the happiest person in the world when we all were playing music. Oh, well, I was about nine or ten when I would start going to those square dances, and he'd wear me completely out. Play maybe three or four hours. Now, I don't know how they done it without stopping, even. They just keep going, you know. The sheriff, he'd come get it, take him to Peterstown, and play for dancing. And it wasn't nothing to do but just to get together on Friday and Saturday night, play, and of course, some of them drank a little too, you know. He'd go, we'd go and play for these square dance. He wouldn't take a nickel. His, his style was this, what's called a long bow style. He had a bow moves out of this world. He had one of the best bow licks i ever seen. I don't know how he, how he used that bow. But he didn't do no, no bow like this or nothing, but he just had a hop in it. A little hop in it was unique to anybody else. I don't know, but he'd slip, slip the notes in so slick and make your head swim. I'm telling you. He mixed rhythm with melody real well. That's, that's, what, that's one thing that stands out. It has virtually nothing but long, but it's a tune he called Ducks in the Pond. But you take a lot of fiddlers would come, because a lot of them, even out of New York, would come down and, and Dad would teach them. He, any time, he never turned nobody out. Somebody came to Mr. Reed, I'd like to learn this, and I'd like to show me how it goes. He said, I'm going to get my fiddle out from under the bed. Well, he enjoyed it. If people were wanting to play his tunes. And my dad really enjoyed wanting people to play his tunes. Oh, he would, he would gladly teach you how. You know, if you was interested in teaching, he'd, he'd really enjoy that teaching. Uh, one of the fiddlers I met was a fiddler named Oscar Wright who lived in Princeton, West Virginia. And he said, boy, I like that song. I said, would you learn that? He said, from Henry Reed to Glen Lynn. So I said, well, Henry Reed, he must be passed away by now. Oscar said that he still lived. He said he lived down Glen Lynn. Said, all you got to do, I'll take you down there. And he did, he'd take him down there. And we were ushered in. They were just sitting down to eat. But he realized that the way Daddy played, he wanted to play. It made me realize this was going to be my mentor. So he come back and come back and come back and he learned it just like, you know, the bow and everything. This is his project as well as my project. You know, we always thank Alan Jamar for, you know, his interest in the 60s to do this. And like I say on that music you see in the archive thing, I say Henry would be off proud to know that it was there. I knew if we could get that power that people would start picking up some of it. It happened because a young musician from the area, Chris Vaya, uh, got excited about Henry Reed and Henry Reed tunes. And uh, Chris became the next generation of enthusiasm. We definitely wanted it down at Glenland where, where he was from. It's Chris's energy more than anything else that's created this festival. So, I mean, it goes from a hayfield to a festival in a couple of days. I think it's one of the best things that's happened around here in a long time. To me, that's, 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 that's part, I, that's, I feel like it's my job to, to try to keep stuff around here going. Chris plays Henry's tune as close to anybody you're going to ever hear. I like to play with Chris because he plays like my dad, and, oh, and I like to play with Alan and play like my dad. Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's, that makes me feel like it's a mission accomplished if I've got it anywhere as close to what Henry Reed had. But he's dedicated. He'll spend hours on hours sitting working on one, one bow lick. You've got, I mean, to preserve it, you've got to know how to play it. You can't just say, I want to have a fill for this. So he's learned to play it before he ever tried to do anything else, and he's good. He's, he's as good an old-time fiddle player as he is around here now. I wanted to try to learn it right, and that's, that's, that's it. I still ain't there. <laughs> and it needs to stay here. I mean, this is part of what built this whole area right here. The barn dances and the square dances and the moonshine and everything else. I'd like to see more younger people get more involved, come in there and, and learn it. I'd, I'd like to pass some of this stuff on. I'd say he's more or less just a humble fellow, you know, but he loved to play the fiddle. It gave me a reason to learn the fiddle because I didn't want to learn fiddle until I started listening to Henry Reid's music. Uh, he's uh, truly become a sort of a beacon in my life ever since I met him. I'd love to 
you know, been, you know, met him and stuff, but played with him. I'd, I'd have liked to have took my banjo and played with him, you know, I, I'd have left a fiddle in the case. <laughs> well, he's changed my life, and he sure changed it for the better. If what you hear is old time around here is Henry Reed. I mean, he, he is the legacy around here. So. You know that, don't you? Yeah.